This is uh, part two about how to compute large powers of an integer a and then reduce mod n. And this is in 2.32 of Stein's elementary number theory book. So you should have watched part one. Part one went over this algorithm for how do you write a number in binary? It's one way to do it anyway. And remember in binary, we're talking about how do I write an integer m? How do I write it in base two? So I'm only gonna allow for my coefficients on the powers of two to be zero or one. And uh, we did an example last time when we saw that the binary expansion of 12 is 1100. Zero, zero. And the way you should read that again is, you know, starting over here, this is the coefficient on two to the zeroth power, in like the ones place, whatever you wanna call it. Uh, this is the coefficient on two to the first power. This is on two to the third power. And this first one you see is the highest power of two that you get, so two to the third power. So that's how you should read binary. We're gonna actually see like another way to do it too in this video, it's a little bit quicker but this algorithm will work all the time too. So what do we want to do? We want to go down to, all right, why do I use or how do I use that uh, idea of writing a number in binary to compute just large powers of any number and reducing it mod n. And so what are any of the assumptions we're making here? Well, we're really just assuming that a and n are integers and I want m to just be a non-negative integer. So zero is okay, but otherwise positive. And what we're gonna do is again, compute a raised to that mth power and reduce it mod n. So what are the steps to do that? Well, the first thing we should do is take this exponent m and write it in binary. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna notice that a to the mth power should be equal to, I'm just gonna multiply a, these powers uh, a to the two to the i, where the only powers of two in that exponent I'm taking are the ones that had a one in the binary expansion. So let me try to give you a quick mini example here about what in the heck is this trying to say? Let's say m was 12, so I'm trying to figure out what a to the 12th is. All this is saying to do is, I just need to compute a to the two to the third times a to the two to the second, because two to the third and two to the second were, if I go back up, um, yeah, two to the third and two to the second, those were the only times that I had a coefficient of one instead of zero, right? I'm just picking off those. So that's what we're gonna do first every time. That's why the binary expansion of that exponent is important. So I'm gonna think about, again, a to my power m, really just a raised to the two to the power of, well, where did you get a one in your binary expansion? So now what we'll do is we're gonna compute all the powers of a, uh, like a times, m, so sorry, a, a squared, all these powers, a to the power of two, that's what I'm trying to say desperately here, just by successively squaring um, each one of these here. And we're gonna do that all the way up till we get to our last one. So like in our case here, our last one was two to the third. And so in this case, uh, R plus one is the number of binary digits. So two to the third here, so three is my R, and of course with 12, remember it was one, one, zero, zero, that has four, three plus one, binary digits. Now what we do is we're just going to multiply, again, these powers of two that had a binary coefficient of one. And we're gonna just reduce each of these mod n. So really what it comes down to, again, is just kind of sneakily rewriting this a to the 12th power as the product of these two here, where it was a raised to two to the power of wherever you got a non-zero digit in your binary expansion. Let's do a concrete example, because maybe that's a little bit confusing. So let's see if we can compute the last two digits of seven to the 91st power. So, I mean, what does that mean? Last two, what am I talking about? Like the ones place and the tens place, if you were to write it like in base 10. So how do we compute those? Well, if you think about it, if you want the last two digits, then you should work mod 100, right? If this is some huge number, I'm gonna write it, I'm gonna think of it as, you know, something times 10 to the zero plus something times 10 to the first plus something times 10 to the second plus blah, blah, blah. If I reduce mod 100 though, what I hope that you notice is all this other nonsense here is zero mod 100. And so that would just pick off again, the ones place and the tens place, which of course is what I want. So what we mean by last two digits. Now, how do we actually do this? And this example is kind of nice too. Uh, the numbers that we picked out here, I guess seven and 91 are completely random here. Um, and so seven and 100 have a greatest common divisor of one. And so what do we know then? I know that by Euler's theorem is what 2.1.20 says. 
uh, it says that seven raised to the phi of 100, remember phi is Euler's phi function, I just said phi and phi in the same sentence, that's crazy. But anyway, seven raised to that power, remember this counts how many numbers are relatively prime to 100 that are less than or equal to 100. Anyway, it's congruent to one modulo 100. Now what we're gonna do is, well, what is phi of 100? In other words, how many numbers less than or equal to 100 are actually relatively prime to 100? So there are some formulas to do that, remember? So phi of 100, phi is multiplicative. You think about the prime factorization of 100, and we know how to split. How do we compute phi of 2 squared, and how do we compute phi of 5 squared? Remember, it splits. This is what phi of 2 squared is, and this is what phi of 5 squared is. And what you get when you uh, compute that is 40. So what does this mean? There are 40 numbers that are less than or equal to 100 that are also relatively prime to 100. So what we've got then is we're gonna replace this exponent here by 40, because that's what we just computed. So why does that help us? Why on earth would we do that? Well, seven to the 91st, that's a pretty ginormous exponent here. So let's see, how many times can I break 40 off of that 91? Well, let's take a look. I could think of 91 as 40 plus 40 plus 11. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna employ my exponent rules. I know that this much here, this is seven to the 40th times seven to the 40th times seven to 11. That's how my exponent rules work, just from like college algebra. And what we just computed above is that, hey, anytime you get 40 as an exponent, we're gonna be congruent to one. And so this is one, this is one. So it remains to actually compute just what's seven to the 11th mod 100. So what we just showed is trying to figure out what 77 to the 91st power mod 100 is, it's actually the same thing you get if you just did seven to the 11th power mod 100. So wow, we went from 91st power, and it might be easier to do 11th power. So let's check this out then. Now we're gonna employ our little algorithm. Let's take 11 and try to write it in binary. And if we're gonna do that, you could use the algorithm that is on the previous page, or you could check out the video, uh, part one of this. Or, you know, another way to get to binary is we're just gonna successively divide by two. And we're gonna keep track of the remainders along the way. So, and do a little division algorithm, do the shifts. And so what do I mean by that? I'll take 11 and divide it by two. I get a remainder of one. Uh, now I'm gonna shift, and I'm gonna take this quotient five. I'm gonna put it here, that's like my new M, remember that? And we're gonna divide it by two. And I get another remainder of one. I'm gonna take this two, that's gonna be over here. Uh, I get a remainder of zero, and finally I'll take this one, and I'll shift it, that's my next M, and I get a remainder of one, and now you see it, I'm done. Now my M is zero. So what do I get? Somehow these remainders should be the binary representation of my number 11, and uh, how you should read that again is this should be the power, the highest power of two that has a one as its coefficient, and read it on down, so that this would be the exponent on two to the zero, I'm sorry, the coefficient on two to the zero. This would be uh, the coefficient on two to the first, this would be on two to the second, and this would be on two to the third. And so of course, maybe I shouldn't say of course, this is one zero, one, one, if you read those that way. And just to write out and to try to uh, emphasize what I'm saying up here, I'm saying you should get a one on two cubed. Hey, that's eight. I'm saying you should get a zero on two squared. Notice I don't have any two squareds here because it's really a zero that's on two squared. Uh, and then uh, what else? I said we should have a one on two to the first. And I said we should have a one on two to the zero. Okay, so at this point, we've got our binary expansion of 11 here. And now what we're going to look at is um, just these numbers here. And so what do I want then? That is going to tell me what are the powers of 2 that I care about. So if I scroll down a little bit, we're going to compute all the way up till I get to a to the 8th here. And the only ones I care about again are, well, a to the 8th, a to the 2nd, and a because those are the spots where I had uh, a one as my binary coefficient. And so if we do that, what's our a? It's seven. And why do we need, you know, if I don't need a to the fourth, why is it here? Well, a to the fourth is gonna help me get a to the eighth by squaring. So a is seven, a squared is 49. And what are we reducing all the way through, uh, by the way? We're always reducing this mod 100. So in every one of these, mod 100, think about that. So really the first non-trivial one is this one. And uh, Professor Stein gives us a little note here. It's to, to compute this mod 100, it's easier to work mod four and mod 25 by using the Chinese remainder theorem. And I thought it might be good if I 
just kind of reminded you of that. So what's he talking about here? So remember, what did the Chinese remainder theorem say? It told me that the solution to x is congruent to 49 squared mod 100 because um, 100 is 4 times 25, and those factors are relatively primed to each other, this solution should be in correspondence with the system, uh, the solutions to this system. x is congruent to 49 squared mod 4, and x is congruent to 49 squared mod 25. And it just so happens that this is easier to compute. Let's think about, first of all, let's think about well, what is 49 squared mod 4? 49 squared mod, what's 49 mod 4? So 49 is congruent to uh, 1 mod 4, right? The remainder is 1 when you divide 49 by 4. Uh, so in that case then, what is this? This is just 1 times 1, so 1 mod 4. Maybe I'll rewrite that as a separate system below. And then what else I want to do is what's, what's 49 mod 25? Well, 49 is congruent to, well, if I think about uh, 25 times 2 is 50, 49 is 1 less than that. So 49 is congruent to negative 1 mod 25. And so what does that look like then? This is just negative 1 squared. So this system here is the same thing, maybe equals. x is congruent to 1 mod 4. And x is congruent to, well, if this is negative 1 squared, then this would be 1 mod 25. Now there's one more thing about the Chinese remainder theorem. It told us that the solution to this system is unique modulo m times n, which happens to be the 100 here. So in other words, if at this point you could eyeball a solution, which I can, like x equals one would satisfy both of those, then one is the solution you're after, that you're after. And so in our case here, x is equal to one. So why is this cool? Well, 49 squared mod 100 is 1, and therefore, how do I take a to the 8th power? Oh, you just square 1, so 1 is a to the 8th power. So what do we get at the very end of this? What does this all boil down to? 7 to the 91st. We said it was easier to just do 7 to the 11th, and that's where Euler's phi function helped us out. And then by our algorithm here, 7 to the 11th, I'm going to think of that as 7 to the 8th times 7 to the 2nd times 7, and those powers are 1 times 49 times 7 respectively. And if I multiply those together, 49 times 7 is something we could do by hand, just like we were in the 1700s, you'd get 43. So 43, 4 and 3 should be the last two digits of 7 to the 91st power. And so we could check this out in Sage too. Remember mod 7 comma 100, that is thinking about um, setting this as uh, like 7 in the ring, or the group, whatever you want to call it, you know, z mod 100z. And what we're going to do is we're going to raise that equivalence class to the 91st power, and you could for, uh, 43 here, which is exactly what we got by hand. Again, Gauss and Euler would be so proud of us. Uh, and if you actually want to see, like, well, 7 to the 91st power, how bad is that? And Gauss and Euler probably would not want to do that by hand.